Captain. All right. Good, good Monday morning, everyone. This is Michael Benizi, head trader at Tradeview Markets, wishing Rich Ellison a happy 50th birthday. Our head of marketing. This is the right video. Okay. So it's uh, it's Monday morning. I'm going to go sneak peek at my screen. I'm going to work backwards. Uh, you know, there's some dead cat bounces. There's proper rotation. The VIX was up early in the morning. Now it's not. So uh, here's what's going on. Groups are moving in sec. You know, stocks are moving in, in groups, as you can see. Red oils, uh, red uh, commodities. So rotation still evident. Uh, stock picking is still in play, and we'll leave it there. Uh, so either take a screenshot or look at something. This is my basic universe. It doesn't really change that much. I mean, Newmont Mining and GDXJ, I know all these ancillary or other stocks that are underneath these apples could be uh, Swix, Jable, Corvo, uh, you know, all these other stocks, uh, obviously Shop and pet, pet Pins could be something like a, a Snap or any other ones, those dogs. With that being said is, I'm going to go back to the routine. I'm going to sign into TradeView Markets. There's TradeView Markets site. I'll submit my preferences. I don't have any preferences because you know what? Everything in this site is good. I just sign in. You know what I mean? It's like going to a restaurant, you know, that you trust. You don't even care what the, you know what's on the menu. You just go when you know you're going to be satisfied. Same with TGH. Issue. Oh, Ish what issue, coach? You don't know what the issue is. My partner. The stock goes by the symbol of GFI, Goldfields. You might be familiar with it. That's the issue. When my trade turned into my uh, trade turned into a position, but I did. It's not like I didn't get. I didn't get caught in these one in these little things, but it's a GFI. I'm going to digress. I'm going off on tangents, and I'm not doing the right thing by our normal guys, if not new new people. Okay, Monday morning. And if you do miss this, I'm not going to say it at the end. Go to our red YouTube channel where every day uh, you could watch Coach and I do two videos a day, Tuesdays and Thursdays. We do. Uh, a video together, or at least a stream together. Uh, Coach already got 92 views one hour ago, 10 minutes, short and sweet. I got to cut mine a little bit. Uh, bravo, Coach, really, as we passed 3,000 uh, subscribers, 30%, 33%, or give or take a point uh, from last year and going forward. That's the help of everybody realizing the type of content we bring, the marketing team, uh, just reaching out to everybody or reaching out to a greater audience and showing uh, what we could do all for free. And I don't think it's going to change anytime soon. With that being said is let's log in. Well, you know what? We're not going to log into futures. We're logging into trade data. Okay. So this is where we started. And I started posting Sunday night as I usually had been doing for Monday. So people can at least sleep, sleep on the proverbial plan. Okay, this is my good evening. Okay, I'll post this. You know, this might have been, this was this looked uh, positive early on. A deal in, in Cleveland Cliffs, or actually, uh, U.S. Steel said they're not interested in getting or shook off the U.S. Uh, steel deal. But this is the chart on U.S. Steel, and I think T.J. I believe what was in it with us right here. It looked great, and then it collapsed. I'm not in it. It went down. You know. And that was it. That's just, it, it could have been, it could, you know what? It could have been very much last weekend or two weekends ago when I had a nice size position, but it's 8,000 8, shares. I think I was trying to corner the market in it. Uh, option flow was persistent. The chart looked good. The rotation was prevalent. Sands the last week. So what are you going to do? You move on next. You note the trade. You note the option flow. Uh, you can't catch everything. You just got to process and hopefully history repeats itself. And we move on. Was uh, Hold on. Here's the chart. Uh, chart on X had it be me and TJ or, you know, I was, I was buying it. I mean, it wasn't, I want, I'm not in it for a stock not to hurt me, but the price action was showing me at that point. I shouldn't have gotten out. Like I said, sands the last week. Uh, hopefully coach is going to get me out of some metals here. Cause I'm hoping I'm, I need them. <laughs> Why? Uh, all right. Go back to TGH. All right. So that opened up, that came out late Sunday night. And that was a little bit uh, poke some good news, if you will. Uh, let's see how the stocks close. XCLF will move on. Of course, as we always start the trading week, as a TGA tr tradition, we started with Helene's charts. There they are up, up, up to down. And uh, another one I wanted to make a note of, and Coach and I talked about it for, well, this is the XBI. I mean, that's been the, I'm, I, I love BIOS. Yeah, the, and why do I love BIOS? It's very simple. Uh, because the BIOS, when they move, they move. They, have, they trade volume. 
let's see, let's even go back to a weekly, and even more so, uh, they move together. You know what I mean? Stocks in, in, in say, say a CRISPR group or a uh, a diabetes group, if you will, they move together. And I like stocks that trading, you know, the trading groups. Uh, you know, just like any, I, I started as a financial advisor, and one thing I was always the number one rule is to diversify. So certainly, I don't want to be all in one in one stock that has a binary situation. But when they move, they move together, and they move in reason. So there's a chart on the XBI. Uh, another one we talked about was uranium. Coach was talking about. I actually brought up URA. I think it was last Tuesday or Thursday, as we looked at CCJ. The reason why we talked about the uranium group was because of CCJ still taking option flow. So this is going to. I mean, that's that's the weekly. This is the daily. I'll give it the ultimate compliment. I wouldn't short it. Here's the URA, the actual index itself, looking to do a little catch up. I mean, it's gonna. It looks like it's going. I don't know how URA would catch up at CCJ. It would. It, it looks to me, if I were to just from here, that it would happen to be the secondary or, or ancillary ones that would have to pop as CCJ sort of rested. Uh, I'm not really a trader of these ancillary uraniums, but there's UEC. Certainly URA wouldn't be bad, but there's the chart on URA. And Helene brought it up, and it's kind of an obscure chart. Uh, Coach and I talked about it, but it also might be a more symbolic of a macro view. Uh, certainly uranium is not, you know, it's not something seasonal. I don't think it is, at least. Somebody proved me wrong, and I'll be more admit if I'm wrong. But let's even get back to an issue here, GLD to a degree. GLD to a degree. Okay. You know, Aline, you know, I think she tried to make the freaking pencil as thick as it could. I think that's a marker. Uh, but even so, there's the chart on GLD. And I don't even have to look any further because straight up, this if I want to hear what's going on, I go right here and I go once again. And I look at Coach's video that we did this morning. I'm sure he's I'm sure it was one of the fi finer topics, if not the first topic that he talked about. And uh, I don't need to go any further. I see where the chart is. Uh, I see where the stocks are, and I want to, if I want to know, it's almost like Coach's video that we do on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Coach is the smarter one, I'm saying it, uh, although it's not a contest, and Coach really gives you a macro view on what's going on, and I kind of uh, you know, shrink it into a target to maybe direct you how to trade these views, if you will. They are very, very high-level views. Coach is probably trading uh, the best he's trading in some time. Uh, is a little bit longer of a, of a trader, and that's fine. But here's the equity put call ratio, as lean noticed, a little cause for a bounce, a little bit of fear is putting in, been putting in. Uh, here's the macro view of, of the chart on the spies, if you will. Uh, here's another view that I spoke that I posted this morning on the on the spies. So as I said before, come on, in, coach. As I said, as I always say, uh, uh, macro view on the market. Uh, I'm interested, I never, ever, I shouldn't say never, ever, very rarely, and please call me out, and it's not a prove me wrong thing, but I very rarely trade indices, I very rarely trade EVS, I don't trade spies, I don't trade Qs, I just don't do it. Uh, and it's a rule of mine, it's been, a, it's been probably literally the rule, not a rule, it's, it's been something where I'm knowing what I'm good at uh, for some time now, it's probably the longest rule I've held to. And it's been, you know, do I miss in on a T2QQ rally? Maybe. But you know what? If the Qs are rallying hard enough where I'm upset, I know where to go to catch something, at least the tail end of a move. So I don't really trade the indices. It's up to the coin flip for me. And the, I leave that to homage to one of my mentors, Neil Stadler. Uh, one day the market was going banana. I think it was like a double rate cut, whatever it was. Market was flying. Futures are literally up 200 handles. And he was sitting there the whole time looking at the screen. Hey, P Rod, good to have you back. Hope you're trading well. I think you are, Peter. It's your type of market. Uh, and he's looking at the screen and he's on my left and he's, I'm fine. And, and I said to him, I said, Neil, do something. And he says, Mikey, the futures are up 200 handles. I don't know if they're going to go up another 100 handles. It's a gamble. It's 50 50. I do know that the, that the futures have ran 200 handles and Apple's underperforming at the moment or whatever, uh, Procter and Gamble, whatever it was at the moment. And that's something I'm looking to fade. So, for those who are looking for market plays and pretty decent at market calls, not market plays, uh, I'll leave it at that. All right. So there's the macro view on the market. I'm saying with my point, and I started this whole thing is that coach really has a better handle. Uh, and one of these things is putting your ego aside. It's not a contest. I'm glad I got one of my go-to guys to go to being coach. 
one way to go to a macro move. So I digress. I want to get to some points here. <clears throat> All right. Also with these posts to start the week. Okay. S&P, I am falling wedge, Tesla. These are all charts that June highs. These are all ch charts, whether what, what, this is a chart on the spies daily, uh, that no matter what level you're in, you have to be uh, aware of. Uh, if you're an amateur golfer, you'll know you at least have to have your putter in your bag. So if you're a pro, you know you got to have a putter. These are one of the things. This is a putter. If you're going to play golf, a chart of the spies, what it's happening right now is a putter. Uh, you're not going to score and you're probably going to get disqualified if you don't know the basic rules. And right now, that's the spies are. That's your map. Maybe. Hmm, all right. Next squeeze and short funds. Read that on your own time. It's self explanatory, self explanatory. Uh, 13D filings. Uh, somebody like Seth Klarman, adding to Amazon here. Another one. Here's your economic data for the week. Save this. I always say to double click it. Whatever you have to do, copy it, save it, put your thing on, put it on the refrigerator, whatever you got to do. There's another part of the roadmap for your plan this week. ODT records, that's why you're getting intraday movements. That's why you're not getting a lot of collapsing or big rips in the market because there's always hedging involved. It's a shame, but, you know, the parameters stay, you know, this parameters stay within a range. You know, it's maybe it keeps it from, from, from having limit downs. Who knows? But it is what it is. I'm not really tight to dissect it. All I know that there's a lot of move. You know these these day to day options are keeping the the the, the ranges wild in the in the in the, in the mornings and the afternoons, and then either having inside or outside day ranges ranges from there. And you got to be aware of the pivots and volume. That's all. It's our job. I mean, that's you know, it's like having a stethoscope if you're a doctor around your neck. It is. I didn't make it up. Larry, a TGH guest, somehow coach, getting another one. More, this is, you know, this is when, with, if you believe that volatility is going to pick up, which it already has, seasonality, which by the way, seasonality has been pretty predominant across the board, at least held to some ranges, uh, east, at least seasonality ranges. So as the volatility tick picks up, uh, listen to Larry uh, and, and get to know what's going on a little bit more. I'd still stock picking, but a lot of things are making more sense, uh, especially in the longer term, if you will. Uh, bespoke. I didn't make this up. Buckle up to the most volatile time of the year from a seasonal perspective. Just be aware. Doesn't mean have to. It does. It's your new religion. If you also believe in seasonality, uh, let me jump ahead. Said these seasonality right here because I want to keep on the seasonality point. Where are we? Here's seasonality right here on the S and P index. Seasonality. All right. So here we are. Uh, this time of year going back for trading years, going back, you know, I'm sure it, it, whatever the sample size is, believe me, it's on sentiment trader. This guy's the guy. So we're right here. All right. So stock picking with me. Will it get a little weaker? And, you know, and maybe it's September. I get it. All right. So let's, you know, it's, you know, usually October is pretty a, a, a bullish time. So keep some powder dry. Let's keep trading. Uh, it doesn't mean it's, it's my religion either. I'm aware of it. Have to be aware of it. Okay, let me go awareness. I posted right there. And that was hours ago. At least I'm freaking, that was two hours ago. My vernacular is at least consistent. Okay, to continue, stock picking is, old, not, I don't want to go into too much stock picking because that's the least of our concerns here. I mean, I, I showed you my screen. The, the least, the stock, stock picking for this moment can take a backseat until I start finishing here. All right, consumer staples with net, net, uh, net bought this week led by short covering. So if you're looking for a short squeeze in some of the consumer staples, I don't know how much they're going to squeeze Procter & Gamble. Uh, don't look for that. I mean, fundamentals might prevail as the shorts covered. Hedge funds sold energy in the fastest pace in two months. So hedge funds net sold energy. Hmm. But as I posted before, the net squeeze, hedge funds sprint into energy shorts just as oil hits highs. This is from Zero Hedge. It's a high perspective. I did post it, but I'm saying be aware as hedge funds sold. Uh, that's not as, as you know, I know, crew, by the way, I digress. Coach, coach been posting all morning as I'm going through a great post about uh, fading the pullback in crude. Great, great call, coach. We'll look at the call, uh, at, see how the crude stocks are going. You could do that at your own time. So, crude uh, do for a pullback? Certainly. Uh, and I'm going to go to watch Coach's video again. Uh, but let me finish this. Just be aware. Another one, be aware. 
Buckle up for those most volatile time of the year. Hedge funds sold energy into the rally. All right, short-term trading sentiment. If it wasn't for the energy, the oil staying sharp or strong on, on Friday, we would be down in the buy territory. But you know what? The, the oils are down. Let me go right here. And you had to be aware again. It was because oils were holding things up. So what happened this morning? Oils pulled back and they bounced uh, technology. Very simple. That's what happened. The rotation was evident. They were in the hole. SMCI, yes, was it a little oversold? Sure. There you go on the RSI, a triple bottom on the RSI. I didn't trade it. I'm not saying catch the knife. There are things that I'm not shy about. MU, certainly, you could have played Tim Fury's theory all day long. Here's MU, positive from the open. Relative strength all day. Here's a chart on the Qs. MU, positive all day long. And here's the daily. I missed it for the day. I'm not going to short it. Because it is at the gap, even if I if I want to short it, because it is at a gap, it still has all the moving averages right there to hold it up a little bit. Plus, it this is not the type I want to short. This is some sort of accumulation. This isn't a gap in a gap down in a retail shakeout in the first ten minutes. Trust me, HKIT. I'm in that. Marvell acting good. AMD. They had it to a 105. Held that triple bottom. Did it? It did. What else am I? I'm in something. This ODD. I'm in. What a dog. I'm in it. I'm in it. My average price is 49. It's 47. It's a new issue. Uh, I'm in it. It's a long-term hold. It's a, always a long-term hold when it's a loser, isn't it? No, I'm being facetious. Uh, Nio, Baba, not doing anything. Am I on the right charts here? I'm sorry. So as I said before, short-term sentiment was there. The oils pulled back and they went to some uh, Wayfair. Wayfair with a range. Wayfair with a range. Wayfair with a range. I did buy it at the gap, 71 to 77, Wayfair with a range. Decent volume. Netflix, that's a short. Let it go up a little bit more. One day up doesn't make a doesn't make a reversal. Netflix will look to short that, and that is a short. Planetair, okay, dead cat bounce. There's a long term. IONQ was the was up 60 cents this morning. You want to talk about relative strength? Now, this one, you could you could say, okay, IONQ was up early, 1640. That did the absolute opposite of the Qs. Now that's gotta be frustrating. INQ, I've been trading it actively. It's not making a lower, a, a, high, a lower low. Moves been made, INQ, it's still active. Upstart, Carvana, Riven, I couldn't hold it. I did buy it this morning in an aggressive manner. Uh, it's still in a range, Riven. Why did I buy Riven this morning? Why? All right, I liked it at the 50 day. Okay, even if I was wrong at the 50 day, I'm not saying what it kept averaging down until 1990 at the 200 day, but I had a safe cushion. I thought that was a proper entry. But you know what? The juice is out of the punch bowl right now. Ribbon's not the stock that it made the move up for the moment. It's going to need news or a catalyst each way. Yes, I understand that it's some sort of, you know, showing some sort of support, but I just don't see any juice at the moment, like Tesla's still down for. There are other good stocks to trade. AAOI, for example. GM, dead cat bounce. Disney just can't get the, catch the footing, this poor thing. That was the day, and it just can't catch the footing. Incredible, Disney. Uh, you know what? I, 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 I want to try to help it. I want to believe in it, but I'm not going to lie to you. Just like M SMCI was a buy here, I'm not going to say Disney's going to make us. I'd rather buy Disney at freaking 90. I really would. I'd rather buy it at 92. As a matter of fact, I'd rather buy it at 95. I'd rather buy it at 95. What's that number? I'd rather buy it at 95. The breakout on the weekly of the 50 day. Trader Jude. Trader Jude. Oh, okay. Trader Jude. Way to go. Mentioned. Been following her for a while. And finally joined this morning. What was the catalyst, if I may ask you to enter the room? I'm serious. Bravo, by the way. Uh, it's not how you start. It's how you finish. We're glad you're in here. But, you know, just for, 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 for teaching purposes and to bring you a better product. I don't want to sound corny, but we'd have liked you to join earlier. So if there was something that was holding you back, uh, let us know how we could have brought you in or what we could do to provide you a better service. With that being said, is Nevada. So listen, this, they, 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 they bounced. This is the, how you want to trade in groups uh, and why I keep these in groups and why I keep the golds in groups and why I keep retail in groups and why I keep the shorts, squeeze stocks like Upstart, Carvana, AAOI, AMSC. And then I keep the... Good, I'm in. And then I keep Planetair and all these other stocks. Okay, so once again, you saw MU up, that was an indication. Nevada, 
That's the weekly. I want to get into this to more what the spec guys are doing. So Nevada, I mean, it's coming into the triangle formation. It made a nice move, even on the upside. One doesn't make, one day doesn't make a reversal, but you know, you could trade the ranges. It's a great day trading stock. So you could draw whatever lines you want, whatever time frames you want. Uh and we'll leave it at that. What stock am I into? You know what I have a lot of? This uh HKIT. I have a lot of this thing, and it's actually working. HKIT. I have 4,500 shares of HKIT. So it's actually working for me. GFI bouncing. Oh, I the PGY target I bought this morning. I did it. I did it. All right. I'm on the record. Why did I buy Target? I want to get into sexier trades. I saw Walmart. I don't know. This could be some sort of pair trade, but I saw Walmart. Where's Dollar General? There's Dollar General's daily. Let's look at TJ Journal, the other TJ. There's the chart on Costco. He's very aware, very sharp. At least TJ's going to the best of breeds. Target, I took a shot. Okay. Target's been around 130 for what? Basically two months. I believe that if it, the 130 strike price, because it's one of those, uh, you know, it's, it's a fun stock. So I believe it's going to be around the 130. I sock some away here. Uh, the only thing that's going to really shake me out is some sort of binary move and target with it, like pre announced the downside. It may happen. Uh, and then we'll see if the bad news is out and see how it, if it does, if it acts then. If not, I nibbled, I'm in some let it go. It's not a barn burner. I'm certainly not going to be watching it every day. Uh, I'll leave it. There. I would love the option flow to come in, but I digress. Target. Okay. Let's go more into macro situations because we want to really plan more for the week, uh, especially with earnings. Okay. This is where short-term sentiment on the composite was. And you can see right here, it's down 1030. Do for a bounce. It's up to you if you want to try to buy something uh, that's showing relative strength or catch the proverbial falling knife, at least for the short term, or you want to wait for that rally or a good entry point uh, to short something on a rally. So certainly, I wouldn't be surprised as things are bouncing. As I showed you my screen nine times, there is still a rotation. All right, Bank of America's systematic flow model. I Hard you, by the way. What caused me to join? I've been seriously treated, caught you guys, and like you and Dale's style. Honest, straight up, and easy to follow. Well, I appreciate that, TJ. And like I say on all the videos, if you've been watching for a while, complaints are welcome as well. You know, I have a thick skin. I've been doing this for almost 20, 30 years. We appreciate you, you know, trading for four years, which I, by the way, it's not a, like a difference, not, not like four years when I started. You've been trading four years and watching us. That's an accelerated level, and we appreciate you being here. Once again, uh, straight up and easy to follow. And the mantra of TradeGate Hub, even though sometimes I'm fast and furious, is quality over quantity. All right, price action, volume, range. Uh, try to make it clean and simple. I do do some funky things that sometimes with equities or some trades that you might find questionable. And listen, it's not a blueprint. I certainly don't go at it outside my lane, lane and start you know uh, trading the bond sec sector or anything like that. So let's keep going, okay? Uh, earnings for the week. Oh, actually, let me go here. All right, here we go. Home Depot. You know what now? Home Depot and Target. Home Depot and Target after the close on Friday. So you know what? I might have to, I mean, I don't know what I'm going to do with Target. I'll keep 10% of the position. If it opens up 10%, I'm not going to be upset I missed it. If it opens down 10%, I'll be happy I only have 10%. And then I'll see, like I proceeded, this is the price action. If When Target announces this week after the close on Friday, uh, oh, it's P-A-N-W. When's Target? That's incorrect. Target's in the morning. There it is, before the morning on Wednesday. So we'll see what happens leading up to it. In the meantime, JKS, after this uh, urban rumble, Home Depot, we get into some sexy earnings. Look at these. Home Depot, Walmart, best of breed. SC, you've been taking tremendous option flow. I don't get it. Is the I want and by the way, the right option flow. Everybody thinks this SC is China, but it's not. Isn't it Singapore? It's Singapore. It's like the Singapore uh Baba. So uh there's SC. A lot of option flow coming into earnings. 
the bottom line is I'm not going to I'm not going to buy it because that would be irresponsible. But I'm going to tell you that's going to be tradable afterwards because there's so many options. They're going to have to level them out. Cisco, okay, GP, Zim. I sold this dog on the rally. Thank God it cost me a lot. I might buy it on the back. The Zim, it's a shipping stock. The reason why I don't think I am going to buy it back is they killed the dividend. That's part of the reason why I ran up to 100. So if I want to buy a shipping stock, I'll go buy SPLK. No interest, EURN, not bad. Uh, earn, looks like GNK shipping. I might say buy the shippers, but since Zim has earnings, I've been watching. It was part of my portfolio, long-term. Uh, AMAT, obviously going to drive the uh, semi-equipment. Zim, new deer. They're all bullish on deer. I'm not going to lie to you. All the big guys, they're bullish on deer, and they should be. There's the daily, there's the weekly. I mean, I wouldn't short it. There's the bullish on deer. I'm, I'm not in it. My guys are in it. Deer. Keep an eye. It's more emblematic of rotation. Uh, let's keep going. I want to get in. O-N-O-N, some of the juice is coming off the punch bowl. The, uh, the juice, there's weekly. This is the hot shoe story. Is going to give some back. There's the chart on Nike showing absolutely nothing even the last month and a half. Look at Skechers pulling back as it should. So this ONON, which is one of the hotter ones. Actually, Coach brought this up a while ago, along with that MBLY, Coach, if you remember. I'm going overboard here. But you can never go overboard, right? This is like a, a trading porn. Okay. Also, keep going. XPEP, JD, Fitch, Wolf, Estee Lauder. Jax, Globe, no, the wrong Globe. TJX, the best of breeds for retail. Let's keep an eye on there. TJ, G Journal, you're a best, you're a retail guy. There's the chart on TJX, uh, TJ Max, best of breed. I buy things for Tony Pistachio there either too. One, two, or three drive coming up, coach, TJX. All right, let's see. Ross Stores, all right, let me go back here and finish at least what's going on. I should have all questions about any charts of what's going on. Coach, great trade on uh, oil. And by the way, always double click. And this is the stock. If you don't want to worry about macro views, you should. It should be a roadmap. There's a stock last week with trading average volume, 12 million, trading 79 volume. You want to look at IONQ. I already brought it up this morning. It was trading up this morning. Uh, 51 million traded on Friday. Average is 13 million. Tr range volume, just to trade it. You don't have to pick a side. Uh, DraftKings, same thing. MQ, Code, Toast. HBI, they were the ones from Friday with winners with price range in action. I'm sure a lot of these continue today. Look at Penn. Penn had a nice move. Okay. Let's, the Penn uh, Friday was the bit was had the biggest range with, with relative comp comparable volume. So let's go to Penn on Friday. Here's the chart on Penn. You should everybody should know they had a deal with Disney. It was actually trading $33 post market, post market that day. So it went from 33 to 23 on a big deal on news, never made a new low, started this morning, probably Tim Fury positive and went from there, 23 to 24 and a half. But the bottom line, the 10 minute chart, it has a 30, you know, has a seven, $8 range during market hours, uh, has a huge volume. So Penn, it was the biggest volume, it had the most volume on Friday, as I show here with losers. And even if it didn't work out as a short, it's still a stock in play in action. Coach gives you macro views. I'm giving you stocks that are moving. Billy Envax, stocks. I tried to buy that box. I think it was at 32. 32. 32, I sold it. Where's Docs? No. 32. No, that was my average price into earnings, 32. Docs was 32 into earnings. Now it's 23. A former play of DocuSign. A former high flyer. It's over. Look at Docs. Weekly. Docs. They never go back to where they were. Even that Mark Minaveri, what his name is, 80% of the stocks, what is it? 80% of the stocks that decline, 80% wound up staying below 80, their 80% decline. So if they usually give back 80% from their high, they're not going back. It's a good quote. I have to look that up to be exact. Bottom line, don't let your stocks go down 80%. Uh, okay, let's finish up here because I want to get into more specific things. Guys should be asking questions. All my posts, double click U and H. There was see that I pay attention. TJ posting on Delta. I'm sure this one is what Costco. That's U and H. 
That's UNH. He's right though, UNH, that's the sector. Oh, sleep is the most active in the morning. AMC X. So I'm posting what's mo what's the most active. Like my grandfather used to, you know, mute people uh, when they announce them. You can mute us. I don't care if you mute us. Whatever it takes for you to get it. Uh, it's not my style. I don't have a specific style that works the best. I just know my style better. And a lot of people know my style. And I should. Here was the playbook. Rise and fallers, most active. AMC had 17 million already as of 8 a.m. Eastern. It had half of its volume before pre-market. It's moving. Uh, there's the range here. So I'm going to leave it here. Uh, I'm obviously in the room all day. I wanted to get back to the theme. I appreciate it. Trader Judd. Is it Trader Judd or Trader Juice? We already have a TJ. I need a nickname. Trader Judd. I need a nickname. We have a TJ. P Percy. Do you have any questions? Percy. I know you got a question. The question is, Mike, what are the sharp guys doing? I'll answer your question. No problem, Percy. I'll answer that question for you. This is what the sharp guys are doing today. That's all really that matters because you want to, as earnings season starts to abate, you want to see guys coming in. What had earnings last week, for example? Upstart, Lyft, Array, Riven, Docs, Twilo, SMCI, uh, D Dog, AYX, RNG, LI. So we want back when we want them backing up. We want them to back it up. Where are we? Here's it right here. Okay, not quite there yet for a strong snapback signal. He's right. As I said uh, last night, I agreed that uh, we're nowhere near enough of a, 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 an over or washout for to sustain any, any type of rally, tradable. Doesn't mean can't, we can't see a violent squeeze without it. You know what I mean? Jesus, you need Jesus and you need coach. You, you need to be coached and you need Jesus. And we got both in TGH. Brilliant. All right. Indices go red to green. That was before. It's 1130. Uh, let's look. AMD, a couple of bull full this morning. Oracle, they should be going to September calls. Soxel, making a move up. XBI bearish. Why not? XPEV, XPEV calls. XPEV calls. Nevada calls. Actually, October. Crocs. Crocs, okay, the Crocs bouncer. Look at the chart. I'm not from Boston, but I'll say it. There's the Crocs bounce. I don't know what this guy's looking for, but he's going into where? He's going into August and December and August. So he's going short and long term. Guy's looking for a bounce in Crocs. I get it, but you know what I mean? It's under 98. So it goes to 100. You know, I very really, it's very really to go from 98 to 102. All right, Planet here, not interested. AMC bearish. Why not? It's the most active stocks. Gap. Okay. I'm, I'm more interested in this gap low because if you've been watching, VFC is a nice chart. And I'm going to buy some right now. More into the fund. Acting very well as insiders still go. Oh, 2018 to 21. VFC, I'm buying more in the fund. Live trading. Fact. Okay. VVV, Valvoline. Crocs overall bull mix, but the retail a couple of bull sweeps. At least he's consistent. AFRM, what else? New York Fed, JP positioning. Don't worry. It's my job to post all these after. Don't worry about it. Vodafone calls. Not interested there. Vodafone calls. RGTI, one of the most active stocks on the board on Friday. Here's the chart, and this is the one. I don't have to look in the I don't even care what it does. This is it. This is the chart on RGTI. Calls going off until where? The right time. Let's go to weekly to see. This is what I see. I want to see that it was once 200 weekly. Not good enough. But it might be good. Is the volume okay? You know what I mean? I wanted this thing. It's actually, you know what? It's actually not, not as speculative as I thought it might be. This is what I go back to the daily. Uh, the line study. Everybody knows this is 101. We'll draw the trend line. Where are you? All right, so it's right here, give or take where the, where the candles are or where the bars are. 336, RGTI. All right, let's, we'll watch it. Next. <clears throat> I got to close up here. I'm really going overboard. Oxy selling puts. Let's do what's going on here. All right, that's it, guys. We'll leave it there, okay? So thanks for tuning in. If I went too overboard, let's look moving up in the last 15 minutes because I have to do this. I'm fiendish. Okay, percent gainers last 15 minutes. Tupperware, HE, Hawaiian Electric. Let's save Hawaii. 
Riot bouncing a little bit, 50% losers in 15 minutes. UVX is pulling back, means the market's stabilizing. Okay, I'll leave it there. I'm talking too much. My mouth is dry. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, and we'll see you uh, throughout the day. And not be the facetious, guys. Thanks for all you guys. Uh, pass it on if we're helping you. It's free. It's always going to be free. Uh, always ask questions. Uh, questions breed uh, answers. Uh, putting our ego aside. Complaints always. Let me know how we can help you. Give a product. Uh, TGH, quality over quantity. It's a long week. Uh, don't your trades turn into positions?